working on the name right now. Take your time. Nova Face. Who's that guy? I have no idea. Never seen him before? No idea. Uh, do you want to take a guess? Nope. He's an actor? No idea. Leader of the free world? Nothing, huh? I've seen him in a movie before, but I don't know. Well, he was an actor. Do you, do you want to do you want to take a guess? No. Um, I don't know. Clips there from Campus Reform, sadly showing just how many millennials are unable to identify Ronald Reagan. Welcome back to Newsmax Prime. A recent study conducted by Pew Research shows some disturbing trends with Americans actually failing a civics test consisting of questions on some basic political knowledge. Uh, let's go in depth now with a man who made political history back in 1994, not only part of a historic class, but he defeated a sitting speaker in the House of Representatives up in Washington State. The speaker was Tom Foley. Our guest is my classmate, George Nethercutt. George Skyping in from South Carolina. Good to have you tonight on Newsmax Prime. Good to be with you, J.D., as always. Thank you very much. Well, it's good to have you here, George. And as I understand it, this whole notion of a lack of civics education prompted you to write an op-ed piece that appeared in The Hill, that newspaper of Capitol Hill, uh, and the headline, Americans get an F in civics. What is going on? What's the biggest problem? Well, I think the biggest problem, J.D., is that it's not being taught. Uh, I think there's a sense that that people don't need to know what happened in our history and need to understand about how our government works. And my, I disagree. I think we do need to know those things because knowing the past helps us figure out where we're going in the future. And we learn great lessons from our history and, and it's just not being taught. And that's a problem for our country. And of course, it is not only millennials. This goes across uh, the demographic range. For example, in that Pew Research Project, the panel was asked to give the current breakdown of the U.S. Senate. Of course, it's majority Republican now, 54 GOP members, 44 Democrats and two independents. Only 52 percent of people overall were able to correctly break it down. And again, a minority of millennials. And you say yes. this is directly traceable to a lack of civics education for people getting out of high school these days. Well, it's really true. In fact, uh, maybe you saw a YouTube video a couple of months ago uh, from American University that the, the questioner asked 10 students, nice looking kids, and it's a good university, uh, to name one U.S. senator. None could do it. I shouldn't say that. One could do it. He, he, that uh, girl named one U.S. senator. All not, uh, the other nine couldn't. But then the, the questioner asked all 10 kids, uh, what's the theme song from the movie Frozen? 10 out of 10. So it's just not being taught. And, and I'm sorry, because these are our next generation of leaders, these students. And so they need to know, have a little bit of sense of who Ronald Reagan is or, or who won the Cold War or, you know, how many states there are and that sort of thing. Arguably, immigrants who, who become citizens in this country are more knowledgeable about our, about our country than those of us who were born and raised here. We'll get to some more ideas on a solution, but again, some of these questions and, and the responses or the lack of responses are so disturbing, we have to get into this. And, and again, from that Pew test, another question that an overwhelming number of people got wrong, how many women justices currently serving on the United States Supreme Court? Uh, right. The answer is three, but only one in three Americans, 33% answered that one correctly. And you would think with the Supreme Court figuring so prominently in the news these days, we would see a little better number there on the Supreme Court. Are you surprised by that? I was very surprised because most of us, uh, you know, should be paying attention to the third branch of our federal government, the co-equal branch, the, the judicial branch. And it's not, I mean, the, these women are in the news all the time. And so if we're paying attention to the court, we should be paying attention to the makeup of the court. And, and I, that's disturbing. It's a, another fact that uh, is really troubling in our country that we need to make, uh, take steps to address. Now, solutions are out there. And I know the state I represented in Congress, Arizona, has put in place mandatory civics education, working hand in glove with the Joe Foss Foundation, another great name from our history. Is right. that the answer, to have the states set up statewide curricula on, uh, on civics? 
I think that's a really good solution, J.D. I think if the states don't pass laws, at least the superintendent of public instruction ought to be passing requirements that kids have to be able to pass the immigrant citizenship test before they graduate from high school. It's not too much to ask. It's fairly simple. In fact, I was just at the Joe Foss Institute uh, gala dinner they had out there in April, and I was in a cab with a fellow from the airport to my hotel, and he was from Iran. And he said, you know, I'm from Iran. I love this country. I've been here 10 years. My wife and kids are here. And he said, I said, is the test hard? He says, no, it's very simple. He My cared enough to, to learn our history to become a citizen. You'd think native-born Americans want to know something, too. George Nethercutt, thanks so much for your time. You. We really appreciate thanks it. Thanks very much for having me, J.D. You bet. More to come after the break, so stay tuned. You're watching Newsmax Prime on Newsmax TV.